Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's gonna be a great one because I'm doing kind of like a rundown of all the books that I've read in read and stopped reading because I feel like that has to be a thing. I've wasted time. Let me just tell you, I've wasted time on very one of these very specific books, which I will rant about later. And I can't wait to hear your opinion about it as well if you've read it. Because I feel like like at this time that I've wasted, I want to, you know, use that. So I'm using it here. I'm sorry, but this book has traumatized me and I'm resentful to no end. I'm looking at my phone a lot. It's because it has like all my, like the list and stuff like that. Even though I have the books here, I don't have all of them because some of them were like audiobooks. But yeah, so book kind of review right now. Or if you want to check out my book review. Um, if you want to check out my book review for last Am I in focus? Yeah, so if you want to check out my book review for last year, you can find that on my channel I just put out I think I put like a card right here or something But I reviewed like all the books that I read in 2020 and there's a very specific theme Which is kind of gonna be like still the theme because I'm still the same person and I'm interested in the same things so I'm gonna also claim that there are graphic novels in here because those are real books and I don't give a fuck what anybody tells me. Um, yeah, you know the vibes. So yeah, so there's gonna be graphic novels, audiobooks, and regular books. And I'm gonna start off with the first book that I read this year, last year. I know it's March, don't judge me please. So I read Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. So this was a really great book in terms of the fact that it was like really a quick read and it kind of like got me into the year in terms of like things that I wanted to read and how, like you know the vibe, like you know when sometimes you need to have like a good first book of the year to kind of set you in motion. This was like that for me and it's basically like, I'm just gonna read you the back to kind of give you a vibe. So this is like kind of like her autobiography uh, Jeanette is a bright and rebellious orphan who was adopted into an evangelical household in the Door Industrial North of England. Her use is um, spent embroidering grim religious mottos and shaking her little tambourine for Jesus. But as this budding missionary comes of age in terms of in terms of like her sexuality and you know genitals and all of that kind of stuff, she kind of figures out a lot of stuff and she realizes that oranges are not the only fruit. Let me just tell you that. Um, it was really good and it was a very short read and her style of writing is fabulous so i would really like it i don't know it, it, when i read books about like conservative christians it always kind of reminds me of like the middle east so it was interesting because a lot of the stuff was like i see similar vibes maybe not to the extremeness that this book was doing but it was something you know what i mean and after that, I read a graphic novel, which I, by the way, I'm not gonna like go into too much detail about the graphic novels, be just because um, I reviewed it for my, I think I reviewed these two for my graphic novel video that I also have up on my channel, which I'll put a little card here that you can watch. I read Are You My Mother, which is, yeah, Are You My Mother, a comic drama. And it's basically like all, you know, painted in, in a specific, like in a specific color, basically. So it's like black, white, gray, and then red, as opposed to Fun Home, which is the prequel for this book. Um, or no, this is the sequel, so that can't be a prequel. It was just like the original. Um, I don't know. Which is all blue. And so that one was about her dad, and this one is about her mom, and it was Chef's Kiss. In addition to that, I read A Child's Life, which I'll put right here. It is basically the prequel for Diary of a Teenage Girl, which I also read last year, and it's one of my favorite books of all time. It was a book, but like had graphics in it, but it was a book. Um, I love that book with all my heart, and Child's Life is a very graphic. Very graphic and graphic and explicit. Um, prequel to that, so I, you've been warned, and you know, don't buy it for your children, even because it is not the vibe, let me just tell you. My traumatizing experience of... Oh, sorry, that's dust, because I literally threw this at the top of my bookshelf. I haven't looked at it since, since like maybe what, last March, last April. So, Lolita, literal bane of my existence. I read about 250 pages, hated it, made me so fucking uncomfortable the entire time. I had 
I wanted to read it just because I feel like it's such a cultural thing that everyone talks about. I hated it. I hated this book. It was so... The writing was good and I realized the point that it's supposed to be from like the predator and pedophile's point of view and that's supposed to make you realize how fucked up it is but it literally just made me feel uncomfortable and obviously the writer is incredible and the like what he was able to do was incredible but the content made me want to pull out my eyelashes and it was literally preventing me from reading any other book because i was like this book is so fucking chunky and the writing is so fucking tiny there's literally no paragraphs it's just words just words so i was just like i can't finish this book if i don't if i can't start another book if i don't finish this book who said that to me who says i have to do that literally no one i was like i want to hate myself today not the vibe i don't recommend it i hated it i stopped reading it and i threw it at the top of my bookshelf and i felt free so that's something else and then this is a reminder if, you, if a book is too aggressive for you or if it's too intense just stop reading it who says we have to read these books i don't want to read them you don't have to read them nobody has to read them um yeah fuck that the next book that i read um i read this when i broke my ankle last march the virgin suicides so this book was very interesting so it was by jeffrey eugenides eugenis eugenis i don't know um it's a really really interesting book and i got it from a used bookstore because i'm like really quirky in case nobody has realized um i got it in 2017 on my friend to a bookstore and it was like a used bookstore quit books you know i think you guys know now i think it's called bliss and paper in the city but i was um i had just watched the virgin suicides like as a the movie and i didn't get it i was like what the fuck what happened it's basically about like it's not really a spoiler it's basically from the point of view of the boys who live next door to the, like across the street from them it's about five girls who grew up in like this conservative christian household you see it do you see a you know uh, anyway for this book trigger warning obviously uh, so they all commit suicide and it's all from the point of view of the people who live across the street from them and it's really really interesting like figuring it out and I when I watched the movie I was like I was trying to figure out like why did they kill themselves I still don't understand it like obviously you kind of figure out and they're like interviewing people later in life like so this book is from the point of view of when they like before they kill themselves after years later when they interview like everybody involved and you never really figure it out but like the way like the way you feel as you get there was very interesting and i really liked it it was a little slow um but the writing style is really interesting so that's what i really like so there's like a difference when a book is slow but the writing style is good and like keeps you interested he has another book called middlesex which i really want to read as well um it's a very gothic vibe uh, it takes you back to a very specific time um yeah kristen kirsten dunst is the main character lux highly recommend love it live for it you know a good a solid seven out of ten a solid seven out of ten um i would give it a nine if i actually knew like if there was like any answered questions i don't know also scenes from that movie was literally tumblr 2014 like i'm gonna put a collage of them right here just for you so you can see this was literally peak 2014 tumblr sad girl era vibes so and obviously they're all white and skinny so they kind of fit the mold love that for them anyway was skim another graphic novel illustrations literally make me want to cry from how beautiful they are um it was it's again about uh, suicide depression love sexuality crushes clicks of popular and manipulative peers the whole gamut of teen life is explored in this literary graphic masterpiece uh, and it's just phenomenal i really really liked it the illustrations are amazing and it's just like seeing the progress it felt very like um like um i don't know if you guys know the like basically uh, afterlife with archie chilling adventures of sabrina like the drawings of how they look like gothic and horror -y. that's a similar kind of vibe which i really enjoyed and it won best illustrated children's book obviously this is not a children's book so just to be warned that's something so i also really got into audiobooks this year because um i spent a lot of my time 
you know kind of like painting and drawing well all of my time basically doing that and sometimes i don't want to listen to music or podcasts and i want to like read the books that i always want to read but like i never have time to read so i started listening to audiobooks and it, i didn't subscribe to audible just because audible just pisses me off um so i subscribed to audiobooks.com because i'm different and not like other girls um, sorry, my, my, my church keeps my church keeps moving, but I basically started reading. I'm still read listening. I mean to this book because it was like it's a very research based book. That's also something else that I like about audiobooks: the fact that you don't you can like pause, listen to a few chapters, come back to it in a few like few days, few weeks, and it's fine. It's not like it's taking up space in your bookshelf and it's just staring at you. Um, so that was something that I really liked and so with I was reading this book. It's called regretting motherhood Which I'll place right here, which is basically um, I'm still I only have like a few ch like a two chapters left And I didn't want to like keep delaying this video. Sorry I'm putting my legs on this trash and I'm like floating all over the place, but um, it's basically it's a book called regretting motherhood and it's a research study done in Israel which um I know a lot of people will like be not very excited about but the um, what I really enjoyed about the book when I first like listened to the first chapter was the fact that it was like they also even talk about like the effects of Zionism on motherhood and the way that we view motherhood and stuff like that like in Israel and Palestine and stuff like that so um, and they also talk about like different experiences which I enjoyed I really really enjoyed this book because it really made me because Yanni there are women who regret being mothers and that is fine and that is something that you know we like obviously there is a difference between someone who like has a child and like abandons them and like that's a different experience as opposed to these mothers who like in their own words say that we actively love our children but we recognize that our lives could have been different and i know that a lot of people say well then she shouldn't have had kids i'm sorry but we live in a society where you are so socially conditioned to want specific things and to look at specific things and to be a specific thing like i if i was to realize you know i don't want kids I recognize that I might have different privileges than other people who have maybe never come up to that experience until they had children. Like rather than focusing all of our efforts on blaming these mothers who have children who might regret it but are still great mothers and take care of their kids, we should maybe dismantle the idea that all women should become mothers. Maybe that rather than putting all your efforts into a woman who doesn't want to be a mom and then when she realizes that you're like, Wait, should I have kids? Well, it's not that fucking easy now, is it? It's not. Um, so that's something to think about before, you know, you listen to the rest of the video. Um, so a lot of these women, like there's so many different experiences, like there are women who you know, are single mothers who regret it because they realize that the financial burden that it put on them. There are other mothers who realize that they never wanted to be a maternal figure in their kids' lives. They wanted, you know, to work. And so the, the fathers usually like, mothers usually take like different roles. And so they're like stay at home dad and then she leaves or whatever. Or like the grandma takes a lot of care. And there were a lot of grandmothers as well in this case study. And like they, they like make up and then they also make a point to say that you know, because I regret being a mother, I actively try to be a better mother because I know that there's nothing I can do. And there are different forms. Like there are women who are terrified of being pregnant. There are women terrified of giving birth. There are women who are terrified of a commitment like this. And that's fine, but that's their decision. And just realizing like the different experiences that all of these women have, revolutionary honestly it blew my mind and i want to link a few tiktoks below talking about this book like in case i didn't do it justice um i highly recommend especially if you are yourself on the fence about wanting kids it's a really big, big good book to look into because it just gives you a different perspective like we never hear about these women who regret having kids like why why don't i regret it i i, I listen to a lot about men who just leave their entire families and just leave that picture not looking back abandonment 101 but where are these women who actually regret having children but are still there taking care of their kids every single day with no complaints literally the majority of these women don't even complain because of the fact that they say that because i'm filled with this shame it doesn't like come out and we probably like being in a like israel is a very pronatal society and so is Kuwait. so is the middle east as a whole like you're pushed to have kids you are celebrated for having kids you are praised for having kids we have probably and a lot of our mothers have gotten 
like I know my own mom got married at 19. The majority of the people I know moms got married really young. How do we know that they don't regret it? And it doesn't mean that they don't love their kids. It just means that this is a facet of society that we should look into. And I read um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Loved it. It's phenomenal. I really, really like the comic. I don't. I watched like half of the TV show. Didn't get into it, but the drawing style satan i literally was reading this before bed and i actually was afraid to go to sleep because apparently i'm six years old but i loved it i loved it so much and it's based in the 1960s which is very interesting as opposed to the movie who's like i mean the show on netflix which is like based in like regular time but just looks gloomy i don't know the book i read was hymens and headscarves why the middle east needs a sexual revolution and, and it basically like delves into so Mona Tawi is very a controversial subject. She's an Egyptian American writer, and she lived in Saudi Arabia, and she is very very controversial. She has very controversial views about the hijab, about uh, and you know hijab mainly, and she's very intense about it, uh, which is fine. You know, teach their own, be whatever you want to be. But a lot of people are don't like her because they're like you are perpetuating the stereotype that muslim women need to be saved and like we can't think for ourselves and lihjab is basically like this form of that and for some people maybe that is the case you know we do like we all know a lot of women who any got to wear or hijab at a young age or and obviously like i recognize that i don't want to speak on behalf of this issue because it's not an issue that i've ever faced and so but from what I've heard with my, like people that I've known's experiences is that there are women who do wear hijab uh, or at a very young age who are pressured into it, who are forced into it and grow up and feel trapped. And for a lot of girl, women that when I was talking to them about this book, they said and they felt like their experience was actually highlighted here. Um, and basically like, but then there are other people who are saying, no, she's perpetuating a stereotype that Muslim women need to be saved. And she was actually on the side of, you know, the French government for banning niqab, I think, which like, girl, I don't know. I felt torn reading this book. I was so confused. Cause on one hand, I'd be like, you're making a point, but I'm like, why would you say that? But then I'm like, but she's still making a point. But then I'm like, I don't agree with that. And obviously that is the point of these nonfiction books to give you a new perspective about something and you can choose whether you agree with it or whether you don't. Something that I do need to admit was that I did read half this book and I got up uh, and I like, so basically it's like, it's um, like, it's basically like a few chapters, like six chapters. Um, the first one is why they hate us, which was interesting. It's basically about why men hate women. It was a very interesting perspective. I'm not going to lie to you. Black veil, black veil, white flag, which is about hijab, and then one hand against women and the god of virginity. I stopped reading at the god of virginity because it was physically painful and trigger warning of mentions of you know assault and and if you don't want if you don't want to listen to that, please skip to this part of the video. But this book was so uncomfortable and so triggering to read by those chapters. I physically had to stop reading and I've stopped reading the book completely because. I literally would just cry a lot around about when I would read this book and I just felt so uncomfortable. I felt like throwing up. I felt physically ill because the problems were so triggering and they were so personal. Like because of the fact that this is like set in the Arab world and she would talk about the Kuwait, Lebanon, Saudi, blah, blah. It felt so intense and so personal that I felt like I felt like my skin, like my skin was basically starting to crawl and I couldn't take it anymore. And I was like, why am I forcing myself to subject myself to this like torture? For what? Like, I know a lot of the stuff that's in this book and I and I recognize that these are these issues, but I don't have to sit there and like read every single word and torture myself through it because the some of the stuff that's in this book is so graphic, so painful and I just wasn't having it, to be honest with you. Anyway, to end on a good note, one of the best books that I've read this year was, where is it? Tales of the City. I have the physical copy, but I read both of the books on um, audiobooks, but it's basically a series and you probably have seen it on Netflix. And I'll tell you more about that now. So the, the series basically goes like this. Tales of the City, more Tales of the City, further Tales of the City, Baby Cakes, Significant Others, Sure of You, Maybe the Moon, no, no, Significant Others, Sure of You, 
Mary Ann in Autumn, Michael Tolliver Lives, and The Days of Anna Madrigal. So it's like a long running series. But this was basically the like Tales of the City originally started as like a newspaper, um, like a newspaper, like an article, not an article, but like a column in the newspaper. And you can kind of tell from the way that it's like sectioned. It's really, really interesting. So basically, this was originally published in the San Francisco Chronicles in the 70s, and it was literally the first book about like the LGBT life in San Francisco, which I found really, really interesting. And the way that he wrote wrote about it, like the main character is Mary Ann, it's like straight, but like everyone around her is, you know, LGBT basically. And it was really, really interesting the way that he was able to paint San Francisco that I felt like I was physically there incredible so so good i haven't read a fiction book in a long time that has made me feel like that and the characters have so much depth they're completely fleshed out and i don't know it's like i've always wanted to go to san francisco and i kind of feel like i went whenever i i go whenever i read this book i read the first two books magical and he was writing this as well throughout the hiv and aids epidemic in the u.s so a lot of it came into the the, the book um in the next books especially um and yeah so it was like a revolutionary thing to come out at the time to create these storylines for these characters and these people who have completely been marginalized in the past and who are usually just like the second like the second non-important character in the main character's life um and there was like a, and the thing is it's not just like about like their daily life no there was like thriller parts in this how they're like oh this guy is like he's living in the building but there's something shady about him what is he trying to do and then you're trying to like uncover these secrets at the same time so you can watch the tv show as well so the tv show was made in the 90s but then but it was like supposed to be for the 70s so they put like um apparently they put like a stocking on the camera lens to make it like grainy you can find it on youtube um so it's the ones that there's shows up is tales of the city the, the 1994 one and there is more tales of the city further tales all on youtube and then the final one which was produced by netflix in 2019 i however do not recommend that you watch if you do want to read the books do not watch the shows because it does ruin huge parts of the plot that you don't even figure out until later in like the second book um so i kind of ruined it for myself i i didn't even know it was a book to be honest um because i watched the show like during covid in 2020 in like march or april or something and the music like da -da 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 -da, it's like so perfect in the first one and it's they like carry it on throughout more tales of the city and stuff like that yeah so i highly highly recommend it Hello, I completely forgot. So now we're gonna answer some questions. Um, what is your favorite book genre and what is one genre you don't like to read? So my favorite book genre is, I don't know, what is like, I feel like I have a very kind of, like with, with nonfiction books, I usually like like feminist books, like feminist history books in general, um, feminist theory. But then, is that a genre? I don't know. But for like, like I like this kind of fiction books, like Tales of the City. But like one genre that I don't read, it's not because I don't like to, I just have never been exposed to anything that I enjoyed, is usually like um, science fiction. I want to say science fiction, the classics. I do not like classic books. I read them in high school, hated them. It's just too much. Like, I don't like the language. It just doesn't feel right to me. Um, favorite easy non-fiction read? Okay, one of my favorite non-fiction reads is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. It's a phenomenal book, and I talked about it in my last video about my favorite books of 2020. Um, highly, highly recommend, and it's so transportative and it's like short essays so very easy to read my favorite book i have oh my god i completely forgot okay anyway one of my favorite books that i read so one of my favorite books is i'm gonna say a few the color purple diary of a teenage girl tales of the city um i think those are the three you take notes and annotate while you read no never I think I would like write, like I'll I'll write a quote down if I have to, but I never actually annotate. I I usually highlight, but that's about it. I don't take notes. I just highlight. But yeah, 
Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to all of my patrons who support me on Patreon and who allow for me to make these little videos because I can because I can afford to. So anyway, thank you so much. Um, and if you'd like to subscribe to my Patreon, please check out the link below. Um, you don't have to, but we have like we have um, tiers from like two dollars up to twelve dollars. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye.